0.5 and 2% of the value of the house. And that, that's for a resale house. If it's a new construction, so you've gotten into a condo a building that's going up, it can be up to 2.5% for new construction. Uh, when you go to be pre-approved, they're going to ask you a lot of questions. They're going to get some documentation. They're going to get all kinds of details about your income, about your debts, so your monthly debts like student loans, car loans, your assets. So again, you may have a car that's already paid off, that's an asset. You may have some savings. Your whole financial picture will be looked at. And um, basically in Canada, a pre-approved mortgage is a set interest rate commitment and for a certain amount of time. So I was working on a file today. We're requesting closing in July, and that means that that interest rate as of today is going to be set until July when their mortgage expires, and now they're going to go to a new lender. So in this case, a pre-approval works the same way. But just keep in mind that most lenders will consider a set interest rate called a rate hold for up to four months. And that's what a pre-approval is as well. So that gives you then time to get out with your realtor and find the right place for you and get all your funding into place. Okay, ratios. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this one, but this is how uh, mortgage professionals and lenders determine how much you can afford. There's three really important ratios, and if you're actually sitting with your bank <coughs> representative doing this directly with them, they may throw these ratios around. Um, so here they are for you. You don't have to memorize them, but just so you have an idea what they are. One of the most important ones is LTV, which means loan to value. Value is what you're going to pay for the house. Loan is the amount of your mortgage. Loan is divided by value to come up with a number. If the number is 80 or under, that's called a conventional mortgage. That means that you just go get financing for it. If the number is over 80%, it's called a high ratio mortgage. And now the lender wants something called mortgage insurance on it. Mm -hmm. This mortgage insurance isn't to protect you, it's to protect the lender. So don't get that confused with when later you have your mortgage, they're going to um, encourage you to purchase, and I would be, um, a certain kind of insurance that will pay your mortgage every month if something happens to you. So if you're sick or you're disabled or your spouse dies, that's a different kind of insurance and it sounds very much the same. But this mortgage insurance that we're talking about here actually protects the lender. And that's because you only put a certain amount down so if we're at 80%, that's a 20% down payment. Um, if you're over 80%, then the down payment's coming down and there's a chance you could default on the mortgage. So the lender wants insurance on that in case you default and you pay the premium for that, okay? The premium is also a percentage. So Let's say your mortgage financing is an 85% LTV, so you'd pay 1.75% mortgage uh, premium. So if your mortgage is $100,000, then you pay $1,750, okay? Um, every, as it goes up over 80%, um, the percentage of the mortgage premium goes up as well. So that's something to keep in mind um, that you don't really want, if you don't have anything more than a 5% down, you can still get a mortgage, but you'll have to pay this insurance premium mm -hmm. and it gets added on to the mortgage. So you pay it off over time. It's not something you pay all in a lump sum. Um, one of the very first things they look at is called GDS, which is gross debt servicing. So the first thing they're going to take into account is your housing costs. And those are four things. They're the mortgage payment, 
the property taxes, so that's the city of Calgary, heat, and half of the condo fee. They're talking about making it the whole condo fee soon. So if you're in a condo, they include the condo fee. If you're in a house, obviously not. Okay, when you add those up, they cannot exceed 32% of your gross monthly income. And um, if they're a lot less than 32%, you have a better ratio. They're gonna like that more. TDS is total debt servicing. So they're gonna look at um, the percentage for GDS, and now they're gonna add up all your other debt commitments. So that could be your car loan, you might have a student loan, uh, some people might have alimony, child support, anything that they have a debt commitment every month, they're gonna add that up, it can't be more than 40% of your gross monthly income, okay? So if all three of these ratios are really great, great. If they're average, still great. If they're bad, you're probably not going to have a good chance of getting a mortgage at this time. So, they're going to take these ratios, they're going to slot them in. They used to do them only with their calculators and some people can still do that. Um, but you can do it online too. There's lots of sites that can help you figure this out. They're going to take your credit score. That's a really important thing for them to figure out what kind of a rate they can offer you. They're going to then tell you what your pre-approved amount is. So it might be something like 250000 okay? So that's a maximum that they would give you. Then you add your down payment onto that. And that's how you figure out how much you can go shopping for. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, the thing is that I say here, always save funds for closing costs and unexpected expenses. So you can talk to your realtor. It's usually not a good idea to go out and shop for the maximum amount that you can afford. Okay. Um, I'll have one. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay. So they're really going to look at your credit score. So if you're thinking of becoming a first-time home buyer, there's lots you can do to make sure you, you have a really nice, attractive credit score to them. First of all, if you don't have any credit, start building credit. Mm -hmm. Build it as early as you can. Mm -hmm. But build it by protecting, build it and develop good habits and protect a good score. Because what you do at 18 with your credit score, what you do at 20, it still shows up. It's still back there. The fewer late payments, liens, collections, those all show up in your credit score. And this is something that might be surprising. It's better to just have a few credit cards with a high balance than to have a lot of credit cards with a low balance. When they see a lot of credit cards with a low balance on them, they just don't like that. And if you have only a few cards, try to keep the balance below 30%. It's okay to have a few cards with a balance on all of them, but um, they'll have a good look at it um, if you have a lot of cards. Um, the longer the account is open and in good standing, the better. So if you only have two credit cards and you decide you only want to use one now, don't shut the other one down. Just keep the balance really low, keep the balance at zero, but just leave it open um, and leave it in good standing. They want to see that you have a credit history, so a couple of cards is good. And this is something a lot of young people get caught doing now because credit is a lot easier to get. Um, credit surfing, which is opening a whole bunch of new accounts, they have low balances usually, and you're closing down the old ones now that you have a history with. Don't do that. It looks really bad on your credit report, and it really brings your score down. And another thing to